I'm going to give you an overview of flex states today and why you would use them, you know, an example of how you would use them, um, how I use them in applications, and a code example of how to go about setting them up. So one of the way, reasons I use them is if I open up this Flex application that I have here, it's a, an Adobe Air-based application, you can get it from my website at uibuzz.com. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to open up some source code to show you. And I have a, a list of states here and you can see, you know, I have these buttons, add new record, reports, options and about. And when the user clicks that button, they go to a different state in the application. And the reason I've done that is because it enables me to put in a new layout for the UI for the user. And an example of that here would be if you click on the Options button, it actually changes to this state up here that I have in the States panel called Options. And if I just click on there, you can see that enables them to to set the options within the program and then when they click the done button it actually jumps back to the default state which is this view records so if I click through the rest of the views here you can see under edit record you know it, it gives them a form to edit the record the same for add record put a new one in and then there's the about state and in this particular application the default state is the view records and when the application starts you can see it's got this little start here that basically says, tells the Flex application, this is the first view I want the user to see. So let's go ahead now and actually create uh, some states in the application and, and show you how they work. What I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to close that project just to have less files on the screen. So I have this application that I've created here with two button instances, two button components, a data grid and an accordion pane. Now an important thing here for states and, and and I think an important thing in general is to give everything, you know, an ID, an instance name. So the change to state one button, as you can see, I just changed the label. It has an ID of button change state one and change to state two has button change state two. Now the data grid has an ID name of grid state two. And if I just click on the accordion here, you can see ACC state three. So everything has an ID name. Now, in the states panel, we only have the default. This base state is the one that every Flex application has. And so now we're going to click on this button up here, this new state, and let's create some new ones. And the first thing it's going to ask us is, well, you know, you need to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this state one. It's going to be based on the base state. You have, if you have multiple states, you have the choice to use an existing state as a template for the new one. Well in this case I'm going to use the base state and I'm just going to click OK. And now I'm going to go back up here and click on base state again and I want to create another one and I'm just going to call this one state 2. So now we have our two states and the base state but as you can see it's not doing anything for us at the moment because each one is the same. So what we're going to do, I'm going to click on state 2 and in state 2 we only want to see this accordion pane component we don't want to see the data grid so I'm gonna click on the data grid and hit the delete key now you know don't panic it hasn't removed it from your application it's just removed it from this state this view if you like if I go up to state 1 you can see there it is and we're gonna click on the accordion component this time and I'm just gonna click on there and hit the delete key and then if we click on the base state there we are with both of them again. So if I just click through, you can see state one gives us just the data grid, state two gives us just the accordion pane, and the default sta state when the application starts, the base state, gives us both. So now that we've made the changes to the user interface, what we need to do is hook in some code that actually tells the application to change to these various states. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch over to the source code because I think it's gonna be easier to show you there. And I'm going to go through quickly the code that you're seeing here, you know, beyond the normal sort of flex application code, you can see, you know, there's these new nested tags states. And in there, each one has, you know, a state name. So we've got state one and there's state two. And you can see what's actually happening in state one. We're telling flex remove child and the target is the ACC state three, the accordion component. And when they go to state two, we're telling it remove the child and the target is the grid state two. 
So we actually give it instructions to say, you know, show this and don't show this, and and that's what it's doing. So what we're going to do now is, since we're going to be using buttons, we need to use the click event for the mouse when the user clicks on the button. And I'm going to go to this change state one button here, just click in there. I'm going to hit space and just start typing click. And when I do that, you can see, you know, the IntelliSense brings it up. I'm just going to press return. And what we need to do now is we need to give it an instruction. So we can actually put the code in line here because it's just one line of code to change states. And I'm just going to paste it in here and then I'm going to show you what the code is. So what it's actually doing is we're saying when the user clicks on the button, this dot current state, so we're saying this application current state equals and it's going to expect us to give it a name to change to that state. So since this is the state one button, you can see up here the name for that state is state one. So I'm just going to say state one. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select that there and I'm just going to do a copy and a paste. And so on the change to state two button, we're going to say, okay, you know, this application changed to the current state. In this case, it's going to be two. So I'm going to say two. And now if we go back to design view, and we run this application. I'm just going to hit debug here. You can see here's our default state. The base state has both of the components plus both of the buttons. And if I change to state one and click on there, you can see we've now changed to this state one with just the data grid. And if I click on the change to state two, we have just the accordion component. And you can just flick between there like that. So in code, you know, it doesn't have to be a user click or anything like that. I've just done this for a simple example. But the magic here is if I just close the application, the magic that takes place is this line here, this dot current state equals and then a state name in single single quotations there. And that's that's all that's required to change states within your application. Uh, next time around, you know, we'll we'll look and we'll talk about transitions and how you can have some of those fancy effects when you change between the transitions with the the change between the state in the application. And so we'll cover how you can have some of those fancy things going on and make things look a little more interesting than just that a sort of abrupt change in state.